This is a story that you may have never heard of, and we know you've never seen it before on TV news. It's a story that I literally tripped over one day browsing the internet about the Sugar Bowl. This Black History Profile is about football at Southern University and at LSU January 1st, 1965. The year is 1965. The Sugar Bowl is in New Orleans, and LSU would defeat Syracuse 13-10. During game time now, and a roar goes up as the LSU Tigers enter from the north end and come onto the field. LSU also is crossing a threshold. The all-white Tiger team is facing its first opponent with black players. Syracuse even has a black team captain. Doug Morrow was there. Uh, back in those days, LSU ran the football, kind of like <laughs> LSU nowadays. Uh, we ran the football first and passed when, we, when it was necessary. You, you couldn't find a game where you could watch Syracuse play and find out about it. Rich King, the quarterback, hands off to Floyd Little. At right guard, he picks up four to the Syracuse play. But we knew about Floyd Little. We knew about Jim Nance, two great running backs, and they were people who had... Uh, hit it big on the national stage. An LSU junior, Doug Morrow was Sugar Bowl MVP that year for a final quarter one-man rally. Takes a pass, throws in a second effort. Morrow is clear. He gets past the Syracuse secondary, catches the ball in the Syracuse 25, and he goes all the way. Needed a field goal, and I kicked a field goal. Up until then, Morrow says an all-white U high and all-white LSU were not an opportunity to meet black athletes. And football was a competitive game, pure and simple. Morrow says even if there had been blacks, he believes the most physically able would have gotten the spot on the team. He believes race wouldn't have mattered. It was another world for us here at Southern University. Separate and apart in Baton Rouge. You're in Mumford Stadium with Bob Bennett, a quarterback from the Jaguars of the mid-1960s. And retired NFL defensive end, Rich Tombstone Jackson, a Jag in the early 60s. This stadium right here okay. was from that 20 to that portion right there and from right to that. And this is the field that we played on. Now in the stands, were there any white faces at all? None that I know, unless they were reporters, sideline reporters, then I don't, I don't remember seeing any. These guys surprised me. For one thing, Southern was ablaze with civil rights activities. Because they pleaded with us. To not to march. March 30th, 1960, almost 2,000 students marched from Southern to the state capitol to protest the jailing of Southern students. They had staged a sit-in at the Crest lunch counter. And our coaches told us not to get involved with the movement, uh, the type of uh, the type of demonstration that was going on. He told us we were here to play football. I never expected to hear that Southern's football coaches would discourage civil rights activism, but they didn't want players in jail. Another surprise. Bennett says they had very nice road trips back then. And had it not been for Southern University, I would have never had a chance to fly on airplanes. And a lot of times where we went, a lot of people thought it was our own airplanes, but it really wasn't. And we stayed in some of the finest hotels. It's fitting that today's Jaguar track teams are practicing during our visit. Tombstone Jackson was a Jaguar javelin, runner, and national champ shot putter. Immersed in sports, a student could be sheltered from off-campus harsh racism. The restaurants who refused you a seat. The bus that refused to drop you off at Southern, even though it passed by there. So you can see through some things. And then as you grow, you can say, ah, that's what they were doing. The realization might come later, but for a time, students were safe to dream and excel on both college campuses. Tombstone Jackson succeeded in the NFL. Bennett as an assistant football coach at Southern. Morrow as a judge, DA, and NFL player. In case you didn't know, Doug Morrow is Andre's brother. <laughs> and we also want to give special thanks to the Allstate Sugar Bowl, Southern University Library and East Baton Rouge Library Archives, and the LSU Andoni Museum for those great vintage pictures and film.